Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and over the last two years or so, I've been covering the transition of over-the-air television here in the United States to the new ATSC 3.0 standard. They also call it Next Gen TV. And it started off great, but then the broadcasters started encrypting my television channels so I couldn't watch them. And then the industry got hit with a patent lawsuit that forced one of the biggest makers of televisions, LG, to pull all of their ATSC 3 tuners off the market. And now we've got some more news on that lawsuit that we're going to cover today, specifically the industry telling the court one thing and the FCC another over the same case. Kind of an interesting story here, so let's get to it. Now, before we dive into today's topic, I do want to let you know that this video is being brought to you by all of you. That includes everyone who subscribes to the channel and watches on a regular basis, but also those of you who contribute to the channel, either through my donor box page at lon.tv support, through my float plane, my Patreon, or the YouTube membership program down below. We also have merch now as well. If you wanted to pick up a coffee mug, a hat, or a shirt, we got them there and they will ship relatively quickly to you as well. Made to order, good stuff. So let's dive into the issue here. So about a year ago, I can't believe it's been this long already, LG announced that they were going to stop making televisions with ATSC 3.0 tuners on board because of a lawsuit that they lost in a Texas federal court. Now the lawsuit wasn't for all that much money, only $1.6 million, which for a big company like LG is a drop in the bucket. But the bigger issue was that LG would have to pay rolling forward $6.75 per unit for this patent if the signal was still going to be decoded the same way it had been before. And this amount is about six times what LG had to pay to a patent pool for all of the other patent holders combined. So what happened here is everyone that had a place in developing this ATSC3 technology who had a patent agreed to put everything into a single pool and they'd get a couple of bucks per television unit sold and everybody would be happy. But uh, because Constellation Designs, the plaintiff in this lawsuit, did not join the association, they had no uh, legal tie to the pool and therefore could seek their own royalty, which is what they did in court. So facing this amount of money per unit, LG said, nope, we're out of here. And they left the market, even though they invented it in the first place. Now, fast forward a year to last week, and the Antenna Man reported that Pearl TV, which is the Broadcasters Industry Association, filed a friend of the court brief to the United States Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit. In the Federal Circuit Court right now is an appeal on this LG case to try to get it overturned. And Pearl filed a pretty terse statement here that this could really put the transition at risk for a couple of reasons. One is that it might implore other patent holders to leave the patent pool because there's nothing really holding them into it and try to seek more money. And they were also concerned that other TV manufacturers would follow LG and pull their products off the market or not introduce them in the first place. So they were very concerned here in a very strong statement that this really puts Next Gen TV at risk, especially given the FCC at the moment is expecting to transition over to this new standard in 2027. And the clock is ticking here and Pearl seems to be raising some pretty significant alarm bells in the court. But this is not what Pearl TV told the FCC last year after this verdict was announced and around the time that LG decided to pull their tuners off the market. To the FCC, they said, where's the problem? Everything's going great here. And if you go through their filing with the FCC, they talk about uh, how their patent pools were working despite this issue with the lawsuit and there's no evidence of any market failure here, and it would be unwise for the FCC to step in and force companies to be in a patent pool like they did for the prior uh, version of the ATSC television standard. Additionally, they went on to say that the number of tuners available is broad and deep when compared to the analog to DTV transition from the late 90s to the 2000s. However, that is not what is happening? If you look on the ATSC Association's own website, the Next Gen TV website, there's only a handful of televisions right now that are shipping with ATSC tuners on board, and most of them are pretty expensive higher-end units. 
Now, last week, there was an announcement that Panasonic is re-entering the TV market and they'll be using Fire TV OS on their televisions. And these TVs will have ATSC 3 tuners on board, but those tuners will not be working when the TVs ship. They're going to require a firmware update to enable ATSC 3, and there is no date given as to when these tuners will be activated, likely waiting for the outcome of this appeals court to determine whether or not they want to turn on the tuner and maybe have to pay this Constellation Designs a royalty to use it. Now, the reason why Pearl is running to the FCC with effectively a false narrative here is because they are trying to keep the FCC out of this new standard as much as possible, even though they are getting the public airwaves for free. So, for example, back in 1996, the FCC was concerned that these kind of patent fights might happen over the ATSC 1.0 standard, so they passed a regulation requiring every rights holder to be in the patent pool, which prevented folks coming from outside to try and get more money out of these TV manufacturers. And there's a great uh, description of what's going on here in this write-up from New America. It focused a lot on patents, but it also talks a lot about uh, how the TV industry is approaching this new standard. What they want to do is have it all be a proprietary industry standard so that if you want to make a TV tuner, you have to go to the broadcasters for the blessing to be able to tune into their publicly transmitted signals. So right now, if your device meets all of the standards as defined by the FCC and you pay your patent pool, you can make a TV tuner and put it on the market. That's why we see so many ATSC1 tuners on Amazon and other e-commerce sites. But for ATSC3, you have to go to the broadcasters with your design, get that design certified, get the badge for your product, and you're paying a lot of money to not only get your product tested, but also certified for uh, use by the public. And this is what they're trying to do here, is turn this into another profit center on top of the fact that they want to charge you, the viewer, to watch their TV stations through this encryption that makes it incredibly inconvenient. So they're complaining now that there may not be enough tuners on the market, but they have made the market so difficult to get into that there's just a lack of consumer choice over the fact that this is such a burdensome threshold to meet to just watch television. So this is not looking good here. But you have a voice in this, at least insofar as the DRM is concerned. And we have been fighting this fight now for about a year, trying to make sure the FCC is aware of the fact that we the people don't want our signals encrypted and we would love for this new standard to be treated just like the old one because it worked perfectly fine and there are some real benefits to ATSC3 here. So what I would love for you to do, if you haven't already, is head over to my link here on screen, lon.tv slash FCC instructions. And what you can do is actually petition the FCC on the transition docket. And the other day when I was browsing around the FCC's website, uh, if you look at their top proceedings, this one, the ATSC3 one, is the top one insofar as filings are concerned. And about two thirds of the filings are coming from you the people, we the people uh, are in there. So it's really important to keep this pressure on. They are definitely noticing this is going on out there that we're very dissatisfied with the way this transition is going. And I think we gotta keep the pressure up here. There is an election here in the United States that will be taking place in November. And following that election, we're going to go into a presidential transition. And the presidential transition involves all of the federal agencies so the more that we can get in ahead of the transition to a new president, because we're going to have a new one next year, uh, the better off we're going to be. So if you haven't yet gone over to lon.tv slash FCC instructions, please do so now because it would be great to get as much on the record as we can. And I will be connecting with the antenna man soon to see if we can get down to DC during this transition period and have a conversation with the folks involved with the transition about how important this issue is, not only for us consumers, but also for public safety, because we are now a year and a half out since this DRM started rolling out, and we still don't have in-home DVR capabilities. As we talked about a few weeks ago, the emergency communication stuff is pretty much in a stuck state right now. Nothing's happening there either. Uh, there's a lot not happening here because they've been so focused on trying to get this encryption to work that everything else is falling by the wayside. So 
Lots more to come on this. Thank you all for your continued support and viewership. And we'll be keeping an eye on this ATSC3 debacle that unfortunately it is turning into as it continues. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.